Hey, welcome to another episode of Watch and Learn. I'm Kim Sandberg and with me today is Christina Whitney. We're both educators here at Handy Quilter and we are really excited today to show you a fun project. So we're entering the holiday season and uh, Christina and I were looking through, we have this bucket, bucket of projects, mm -hmm. and we found this these really fun little projects. And so Christina, let's, let's show them what we're doing today. We are going to make these cute little ornaments. We've got one is a Christmas tree, and then we've so got another cute. one over here, a bunny. Those are so cute. So we're we're looking outside the scope of we know right now is the you know Christmas holiday season. However, you could definitely do designs that are outside of holiday, the, the, the winter holidays. Yes, you could do those for anything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and these these are just so fun. So what what are these? What are they made of? Bags that we yeah. quilt. Yeah. It's got a, a vinyl cover over the top. And so let's just jump into yeah. it. Yeah, let's jump into it. I think I think it's such, such a fun project. We're always looking for quick projects this time of year, right? That mm -hmm. we can do quick things for gifts. Yeah. And this is definitely a quick project. So Christina, why don't you walk us through? She's been having a lot of fun working on this in the last little bit in the studio. I've okay. been support, run and grab things for her. So show us what you've got. She threaded the machine for me. I did, I threaded <laughs> the machine. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and let's look over here at this okay. pile that right I have here. here. Okay. So we've got a variety of fabrics here. Okay. Um, I've got fabric already loaded here mm -hmm. that you loaded. Thank I you did. very much. You're welcome. So, mm -hmm. look, look, excuse me, with all of our backing fabric, we're gonna load it so that the right side is down. Right. For this project, we're not going to use any batting. Oh, okay. So what we're going to do oh, is, yeah. The backing is the back of your little goodie bag. That's gonna show, okay. Yep. Then if you flip it over, you'll notice this has a cream fabric for the front of the goodie bag. Mm, gotcha. So you can use whatever fabric you want. Okay. If you want your candies to be a little bit more vibrant, mm -hmm. or let me pull these out so you can see a little bit better. Um, this one has a bunny face on it. Mm -hmm. oh, so if cute. you want that to show, mm -hmm. it works nicely if you use a solid print or a solid, solid fabric. fabric. Okay, no yeah. prints. Yeah, but if you don't really care about if that shows or mm -hmm. if, if you do something that doesn't have anything on the inside, or if you're doing something that has a little bit maybe more boring candy colors. <laughs> something not so exciting. <laughs> You, you might want to use a print. So it's okay. up to you what you want to use. Awesome. So I'm just going to move that away. Okay. So I pulled out these fabrics that we could use for backings. They'd be great. Yeah. You could use it for the inside or the top of the design. Mm -hmm. Either way. I also pulled out some just cream fabric Plain. that we're actually going to use today so that you can see what we're stitching a little okay. bit better. Awesome. Awesome. You know, I was just looking at those fabrics you had there. Um, how much fun would it be to do something with candy canes with this stripe? That would be fun. That would be really cute, wouldn't yeah. it? So, mm -hmm. all right. Okay, so we need to come up with a shape. Yes. And so what I did was I grabbed a cookie cutter. Oh, that's such a good idea. This is just a, a basic shape. And having just an outline is really good because you want to have an opening in the center right. where you can put those candies in. Exactly. You also want to determine the size that you're going to do ah. by how much candy you want to put in it. Exactly. So with this cookie cutter, I'm kind of limited to the size. Right. But not really. Yeah. Well, no, because you can you can resize that. You can make it bigger. You can resize it. So a cookie cutter, some people like to just take their cookie cutters and put pounce or chalk right on the cookie cutter. Right, right. And then pounce it directly on their fabric. If you're going to do that, you would have to pounce Put it on the first layer of fabric and let me pull one of these over. So the fabric you're actually gonna, that's like the background. Yep, this is gonna, let's call this the background. Okay. Yep. So background not the backing, fabric. but the back background fabric. fabric. I would pounce and put that design on the background fabric. Okay. Then I would take my vinyl. Vinyl. And this is actually pinned on, so we'll just pull over part of it. Yeah. You would put the vinyl over the already stitched mm -hmm. design and then stitch over it again. Exactly. And this is just a uh, vinyl, like by the yard vinyl that we got from a store. That's yep. like the tablecloth vinyl, I think is what they call it. So yeah. any craft store carries this clear vinyl. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So I'm going to show you an example. Okay. This one. Um, How I, cute. 
that instead of using cutter. the pounce, uh -huh. I actually used a water soluble oh, pencil nice. pen and marker, <laughs> you marking <tinsel>. tool. <laughs> and I drew around my cookie cutter. Okay. And then I went in, I stitched the first layer, then I put the vinyl over the top uh -huh. and I went back and stitched again. Oh, very nice. I didn't follow my stitch line perfectly. That's okay. If I was really, really concerned about it, I could have slowed down and maybe used uh, like a VersaTool or the mm. Peace Out ruler. Yeah. And use that ruler to kind of hug the foot mm -hmm. and that would help give me a little bit control, more control as I'm going around right. that stitch out. So that's an example of one that I stitched just using a cookie cutter. I love that. And you know, who doesn't have a drawer full of fun cookie cutter shapes? Yeah. I know I do and I I don't make cookies. <laughs> so it would be fun to actually be able to use those yeah. in a quilting project. What yep. a great idea. Um, another option is if you don't want to trace around the cookie cutter mm -hmm. or if your pouncing isn't working, mm -hmm. here's what I did. Oh, I see what you did. I took a picture. Actually, it. not a picture. I scanned the cookie cutter in. You love my hand and background. I do. Love I it. held that on the copier and scanned it in. Oh my gosh, um, that's so great. Printed it out. Okay. Okay. Then what I did was I took this to just a domestic machine without uh -huh. any thread in it. Okay. And I stitched with a basting stitch all the way around. Ah. And it just made these little perforations. Yeah, yeah. So now I can flip it over so that the bumpy side is up. You've got a stencil then. And take my pounce pad. You guys can see that. But yeah, you yeah. can just you can and just then you would just that. pounce right on. So I just created a stencil. So re remember how earlier we were talking about how we we're limited by size? Mm -hmm. When I make this copy, I can make it whatever size I want. Exactly. And do the same process. Make it make it work. You could even, if you wanted to be really fancy, get out the quilter's assistant proportional scale. Yes. And size that so that it would be whatever you wanted yep. it to be. Okay, so that's great. That's a great option too. And you know, the, the cool thing is both of these options you're showing us here, you could do them on the long arm. You could even do this on a domestic machine and yes. stitch around them. Mm -hmm, so, definitely. Absolutely. Very so cool. One of the benefits of doing it on the long arm mm -hmm. is if you're doing a large quantity. Oh yeah. Load your backing and you've got this entire oh, space. throat space. You can just do a whole bunch of them in a row and knock them out real fast. I love it. I love so. it. That's fantastic. Okay. So that's option one. You did some cute stuff there and yeah, I mean, limitless supply, go to your favorite mm -hmm. baking goods store, baking store yep. and kitchen store and pick out some fun shapes. Okay. So, so what else can we do here with this? So if you want to do something other than cookie cutters, mm -hmm. you can just go onto the internet and get free coloring pages. Oh, that's true. I don't even think like mm -hmm. um, clip art or things like that. You could mm -hmm. definitely find some yeah. fun shapes. Yeah, just make sure it's not copyrighted and then do the same process. Yeah. Print it out, stitch around to make that stencil and you can create whatever you want on here. Whatever. Or you could even just draw your own picture. You could do something fun themed, even for yeah. like, do these little for Halloween, do like a cute little pumpkin mm -hmm. or things like that. Like there's lots of options. Okay. Yep. I love the number of options we have here. These are so fun. Yep. So let's so, walk through the ahead. steps. Is that what we're going to do okay. next? <laughs> so let's walk through it, but we're going to do it with our pro stitcher. Yeah. And we're going to do a cute little gingerbread man. So I'm going to bring this machine over here and this gingerbread man, we've actually got a digital file that we can share with all of you so that you could create this this cute little project too. So special bonus for everybody. Yes, special bonus. Okay, so I already have loaded on here my backing. Then I've got this cream background mm -hmm. and I also have a vinyl on top. Okay, perfect. And you can baste it down or I just pinned the four corners. Nice. And I'm just going to make sure when I stitch out that I don't stitch anywhere near those pins. Right. And uh, with pinning, you want to be a little careful because uh, besides the obvious, you know, we don't want to stitch over those. Um, you don't want to pin in an area where uh, you're going to want to put the candy because that'll leave a little hole in vinyl. <laughs> so as you have it pinned there out around the corners, that's we're going to be trimming that away anyway, right? Correct. So not a problem. Yeah. Okay. Just checking my tension here real quick. Make sure my thread is in the tension disc. And you are using a pretty I, heavy thread there. Yes. And we'll talk about threads in just a minute. Okay. Awesome. Um, and we'll show you the difference between the different threads that I've got here. Okay. I love it. So I'm going to create an area. Yeah. And I'm 
Am I dragging our third cords over there? No, nope, you're okay. good. You're clear in the back. Okay, so I'm going to my area tab and I'm going to multi-point, making sure I'm clear of those pins. Mm, smart. I'm going to refresh so I can see that area. Oh my goodness, my gingerbread man is huge. <laughs> so well, luckily, that's easy to fix with Pro Stitcher, right? Yes, yeah, so I want to modify that gingerbread man so that it can fit. Okay. So I'm actually going to go to the align tool first mm -hmm. and I'm going to center the gingerbread man into my area. Nice. And we're going to now go to the modify, mm -hmm. resize. I'm going to turn my lock on because I want him to stay the same proportions. Right. And I'm just going to shrink him down using this minus button on the sidebar. Make him fit. So I think that that's pretty good. That looks good. And now I'm going to stitch it out. Okay. So pro stitcher tab, run, check my settings and resume. And we can watch the stitching here. I think this is always everybody's favorite part. Yep, pull up my <laughs> bobbin thread. And holding both threads, I'm going to resume. It's going to take my tie offs. And I'm going to pause. I forgot to change my stitch length. I was just going to say, I think those stitches look pretty small, which uh, sometimes that's good. And for this project, maybe we want a larger stitch length. Yes. And I was actually going to mention that we want a larger stitch length. So we're not puncturing so many holes in the vinyl. Smart. And so that the thread is laying a little bit more flat so mm -hmm. that we can actually see that outline. Gotcha. Okay. So I am going to change my stitches per inch. I'm going to take mine down to nine. Okay. And we'll see if there, if we can see the difference. Oh yeah. Definitely looks good. And you gotta remember we don't have that batting layer in there. Yeah. So sometimes the thread folds a little bit differently. The tension is always gonna be a little different when you don't have batting in there. But that's so cute for an outline on a just these little goodie bags. I love it. I'm just gonna do one more little stitch here. Close that design up. That is really tight. So we always advise testing your tension before you <laughs> stitch out. Or sometimes the first one you stitch out is your test, right? Yes. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Okay, so I've got this cute little gingerbread man it now. Looks so good. Look at that. I am absolutely loving that. We can see that there all st nice and stitched out. Mm -hmm. It looks great. So I'm going to take these pins out. Okay. And at this point, I could cut it out if I wanted to. Or I'm going to show you a different type and talk about threads for a second. So okay. I'm just going to move this away. Okay. Move that back Let's so I can the see you. machine out of the way and we can so... take a look here at some of your other options that you did. I love this. Christina always, when there's a project, <laughs> she tries it out many different ways. And it's just fun to see the different ways you can do this. So. This week's sale is on some scissors. We have our comfort grip scissors, our mini scissors, as well as a zinger. So visit handyquilter.com or your local retailer to get more information. Okay, this is a Christmas tree that I stitched out. Mm -hmm. And this one I used a 40 weight variegated. Cute. It's the King Tut. It's actually called Holly and Ivy. Of course, because so, it's the red and green. Christmas. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so I picked this design because it did have this open space here that mm -hmm. I could put the candies in. Nice. It's got a spot where I can make my opening to put the candies in as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that in a second. The variegated, I think, look nice. Yeah, I agree. So it's, you know, it's your personal preference mm -hmm. if you want to have the variegated or if you want to keep a solid color. Mm -hmm. I also have this example here. And this is a this is a design from Pro Stitcher, right? This this little yes. tree. Yes. Yep. Okay. All of the designs that I'm using are from Pro Stitcher except for the gingerbread man. Mm -hmm. And that one we digitized and it's gonna be an added bonus. Yep. Okay, if you look at this particular ornament that I did. So cute. I used the variegated again, but this had a lot of overstitching. Oh. And okay. so the threads kind of 
blend oh, it in certain yeah, spaces. So that might be an instance where you want to just use a solid thread, right? a solid colored thread. I think it looks good. Now, I'm noticing here that this one, like, the outline is actually stitched on the vinyl, but you've got stitching underneath here that's just the inside part. So, so yes. it looks like you did a little bit of a different process on this I one. did, and we're gonna go through that. Okay. But let me just show the gingerbread man here. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can get a picture. That's with a 12 weight thread. Oh, that's so, so it really stands out some more. And yes, I would have adjusted my tension a lot more. <laughs> so it's all good. Yes. We like to have fun. We we try new things. We sure we sure do. We have our fair share of screw ups. <laughs> Experiments. Experiments. Right? Yes. Experiments. Okay. So for this ornament, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna stitch that one out oh, as well. Okay, awesome. So, so I'm gonna we'll show you through. the process. If you have something that has an inside design uh -huh. similar to the bunny rabbit. With the so cute little with face. The, with the cute little face. Okay. Because okay? we don't want to stitch this down and not be able to get the candy in it. Christina, you've got this all set up and ready to stitch, but you've you've got a little bit of a different process on this one. So walk us through. Okay. So again, I put my backing, mm -hmm. then I have my background. Right. And then I am going to actually just stitch on this background. No vinyl at this point. No vinyl okay. at this point. And normally I would, again, baste my sides down. I've just got it pinned for oh, now, which absolutely. works fine. Okay, okay, so I've chosen this ornament design and we're just gonna let the Pro Stitcher stitch it out. And this is one from the Pro Stitcher library again. It's a, it's a cute design. Definitely something that if you wanted to do something similar and you don't have a Pro Stitcher, you could find um, a similar design, I'm sure, mm -hmm. and create a stencil. Yep. And it's actually called Ornament. Yeah, easy to find. Yeah. <laughs> much that 12 weight thread shows up, especially when it over stitches. That really pops. It's very cute. mesmerized as I sit and watch the pro stitcher stitch out. Oh. Forget we're filming, I just stare at it. I know, watch sit and watch it. That stitched out beautifully though, and it really does, especially like you mentioned, the over stitching in this, meaning it's stitching back and forth over the same line mm -hmm. at least twice. It really makes it pop. That is, that, that ornament looks really great. So you've okay. stitched the entire ornament. That's, What's the next step? The next step is to put the vinyl over the top. Okay. Oops, and then my pins are running away from uh -oh. me. Oh. Okay, so I've got the vinyl. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna pin it in place. Okay. Again, making sure those pins are well away from my stitching area. Absolutely. Okay. This particular design, if I were to stitch out the whole thing, it would stitch over the plastic. I wouldn't be able to fit the candy in here. Wow. So what I need to do is crop out this part of the design. Gotcha. And the way that it's digitized, I'm going to have to do a little bit of finagling mm -hmm. um, to get just the, the start part mm -hmm. and then take out the middle and then do the end. Okay. So I'm just going to mess around with my start points. Okay. So as I change my start point, I'm going to just follow the stitch path to figure out what I want to have actually stitch. So mm -hmm. this part I'm stitching. Okay. And when I get to this point right here, I'm actually, that's where I want it to stop stitching. Okay. So I'm going to change my end point to that spot and take my beginning or my... Your start point back to the beginning. Oops. It's nice that it's easy to do something like this in Pro Stitcher. 
and I didn't do any adjusting to the positioning. So I know oh, that yeah. it's gonna stitch right over where I had it. Exactly. So when I hit the run button, it's only gonna stitch this top part. Okay. Okay, and then it'll stop and then I'll go back in and change it so it will stitch this outside circle. Outside, okay. Because it essentially stitches that top part first, mm -hmm. then the inside, then the outside. Yeah, so. so it's in like three sections. So I only want to do the first section, skip the second section, and do the last section. Makes sense. Okay, let's let it stitch. actually going to end up with four layers of this thread wow. and it is putting a lot of holes in that um, the vinyl the vinyl but that's okay so if you really wanted to you could and another option is when you do the background mm -hmm. only stitch the inside part that second section that we talked about mm -hmm. only stitch that part and oh. then go back and stitch the other parts gotcha so gotcha different ways to do it just yeah. depends on what you want the look you're going for uh -huh. right yep this i think that's really nice though with all that extra thread it just makes it pop okay so let's go back in and i'm going to play with the start point again okay. so that it will go where i want it to go I'm going to drop the end all the way down. So I'm going to crop out the, oops. Crop out using the start and end points. Yes. I always feel like we should have some Jeopardy music do playing do or something. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to have a little bit of a jump here to get to this other side where it's going to start stitching again. So I'm going to not worry about cutting my threads. Right. I'll cut those later. Trim. Yep. So Loosen I'm going to that up. hit the run button and proceed and watch it stitch the outside circle. to um this is a design that i could take into like designer and even break it into the separate parts and you could have them so that they would stitch right exactly yep lots of different ways there's always lots of different ways to, yes. get, to get to the same end point so exactly. it looks so great though okay so now if you look at it we have the entire design but this section is underneath the vinyl Right. So there's a pocket between the vinyl and that background that we can put the candies in. It looks so good. So just like this one, I can actually pull that apart. And okay. you can see how there's a pocket space open there. Place for goodies. Place for it. goodies. Okay. Okay. Now to figure out how to get the goodies. How do we get the goodies in there? Because this is stitched shut at this point. Yes. So what's the next step, Christina? I cut out cut out one of our gingerbread men that we did. Okay. And I took just some mini scissors mm -hmm. and I pulled the comfort up. grip scissors. Yes. These are the comfort grip scissors. Pulled the vinyl away. So I've created that pocket there mm -hmm. and then I can just stitch through the vinyl mm -hmm. and created a slit there. Ah, gotcha. So you so can you see, I can put my finger in the slit. Just cutting through the vinyl. Just through the vinyl. I love that. It looks okay. great. And then you take your candies. This is the best part. I know. Candy. We all you love put candy. One in your mouth. <laughs> one in the ornament. One in your mouth. <laughs> one in the ornament. You sound like me when I go out and pick raspberries. One for me, one for the bucket. Exactly. Sorry, you had it listen to me chewing there <laughs> and swallowing. I've been told I swallow very loudly. Okay. At this point, you could leave it like this if you wanted, mm -hmm. or you can poke little holes through the fabric. Oh. And I'll grab this other Christmas tree so you yeah. can see. So they've actually got slits right through the sides there. And you can take a ribbon or rickrack or whatever you have, put it through the holes mm -hmm. and tie a bow on the front or the back. Oh, cute. And that just kind of finishes off the look. 
that's so cute. And that little bow, you, that's how, if you wanted to hang these on the Christmas tree, you could do that. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, have them all ready to hand out. That is so cute, Christina. And what a fun, quick project. I can totally see where you could have a bunch of these laid out on the frame. And you could just stitch a full um, frame's worth of it. Yep. And you would, you would just have really, a really quick project. I think you'd probably spend more time putting the candy in it than you would do in the rest of it, right? And Especially if you, if you a keep whole bunch, eating. I wouldn't advise eating one for every one you put in. You might gain a little bit too much weight, but yeah. And you can put whatever candies you want in there. You can put ones that are prepackaged. You can mm -hmm. put individuals. There's no rule whatsoever. And this would be great for like the kids have classroom projects yeah. that you, you need to take it in for the Christmas party or mm -hmm. any kind of party. You can make hearts at Valentine's yeah. Day. Or if you wanted to do something for all your neighbors, but you don't have the time or the energy to make the full on goodie plates. Yeah. Stitch out a ton of these. You saw how quickly those stitched out. Yeah. So you can do a lot in a limited time. Exactly. Well, what a fun project. Well, let's take a second here. Here, I'm going to scoot the machine okay. out of the way. Let's take a second here and talk about this gorgeous quilt we have in the background. This is actually a quilt that was done by uh, Amy Losi, and it is just such a great quilt. This was actually her first quilt she ever quilted on a long arm. She she told us about that. But we love this this fun uh, pattern with the presents. We just thought it was a great a great quilt for this time of year. Get us all excited about gifts. The gifts we can make. Yes, I love that That's quilt. It. Love the colors. It is. It's so fun. Fun quilting on it too. A fun pantograph. Well, thanks for watching. Be sure to give us a like and subscribe um, and have fun quilting this week.